Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is uh, Ubaidullah. I'm from uh, Kohat University of Science and Technology, doing BSMLT in eighth semester. Uh, the topic of my presentation today is uh, laboratory quality control. So let's begin. Okay, so the outlines for uh, today's presentation is uh, what is lab laboratory quality control? I'll define this, what it means, and then how can we detect and minim minimize uh, laboratory errors <clears throat> and establishing a laboratory quality uh, management system. So these are the outlines and let's begin with the first one. Okay, so uh, what is uh, laboratory quality control? Laboratory quality control is all the measures put in place to eliminate the risk of non-conforming outcomes. Okay, so to make this short and to make this uh, appeal easily, uh, basically LQC is uh, taking in steps or taking in measures that eliminates non-desirable outcomes. It means that in the second paragraph, we can read that Laboratory quality control ensures that the lab processes and operations run efficiently and guarantees the production of accurate and reproducible results. It takes measures and steps to guarantee good results and minimize errors. So that is like the basic concept of uh, laboratory quality control. Okay, so why this is important, laboratory quality control and, you know, uh, failure to integrate uh, integrating quality control in a laboratory can lead to several negative consequences. This is important because if you fail to integrate quality control in your laboratory, the following things can happen. Okay, first of all is time wasted because experiments are repeated and tests are repeated, time is wasted. Okay, a budget implications, which means a money wastage. You waste money by not having good results, by uh, by giving in a wrong results, by doing the test in a wrong manner, which uh, leads to, uh, you know, budget implications and time wastage as discussed above. Okay, uh, unreliable results. I mean, yeah, it's a no brainer. Uh, you do test in a wrong manner and it will lead to unreliable results. Okay, so uh, the fourth one is loss of customer loyalty and satisfaction because your tests are unreliable, they're wrong, they're not accurate. So the customer is basically like, why should I even come to the laboratory because I'm not getting value out of it. I'm not getting uh, correct results. There's no need to come here. Okay, so safety concerns, I mean like, uh, yeah, this is a big thing because uh, for example, uh, if you give a, a test, if you give out a result and the test is not correct. The test is not, uh, the, the results are not good enough or like correct. It can have safety concerns. It can, you know, uh, alter the, um, how do I say it? It can alter the treatment of the patient. Okay, yeah. And as I discussed above, it is written below too that delayed diagnosis or unnecessary treatment for patients or even a wrong treatment. Okay, so uh, errors can be detected in three stages, pre-analytical, analytical, and post-analytical. Okay, so in the pre-analytical stage, what happens? Okay, this is the stage in which the test samples are mishandled prior to analysis. Before analysis, they are mishandled. Uh, the test samples, <coughs> excuse me, uh, I'm kind of sick today. My voice is not good. Anyways, um, this may include uh, errors like sample mix-up, mislabeling, improper storage or transportation, and unsuitable sample collection methods. So like this comes in the uh, pre-analytical stage. 
Okay, so to minimize pre-analytical errors, ensure that we, we should do this, the following things to like minimize pre-analytical errors. And these include proper sample collection methods is the first one. Uh, the second one is clearly labeling the sample and the test materials that have been collected. And then like test materials are transported to the lab in proper containers. This is, these three steps are very necessary. And at the recommended temperature. And then comes the analytical stage. Okay, so in the analytical stage, errors arise during the process of testing or experimentation. It means it's like basically the middle stage where like the test is happening, the test is like being conducted and there are errors in that phase. So like uh, these errors can be minimized by ensuring that like all the, for example, if you're doing a test on a specific laboratory equipment, it should be well maintained and calibrated. And then um, you you should have a proper inventory in place which should have, which should contain all the necessary reagents and their validity to ensure no expired reagents are in use. For example, the reagents should not be expired. Actions are taken on staff that is continu uh, continually non-compliant with the SOPs use. It, it basically means that uh, we should remove the staff or take action on the staff that are not uh, non-compliant or not compliant with the SOPs, like they're not following the SOPs. And then comes the uh, post-analytical stage. Okay, so post-analytical stage, uh, as the name suggests, it is uh, after the uh, analytical stage, the middle stage. And what happens in this phase is that um, it is like errors that are done in the um, result stage like incorrect calculations or like recordings or interpretation and interpretation of results is done in a wrong way. Okay, so to minimize these types of errors, uh, manual calculations should be avoided. If there is like, uh, if there is, if automation is available, you should use that. Uh, the second point is uh, the interpreting of the results should be well-trained. The personnel handling the results should be well-trained. Okay, so establishing a laboratory quality management system. Okay, so this whole step is necessary so that this whole concept is necessary to, to the running of a lab, to the running of a laboratory. Okay, so I'll explain that what is a laboratory quality management system. Okay, in short, I will just say QMS because it is too long. Anyways, QMS streamlines and coordinates all the processes and operations within the lab, ensuring that each step is well-planned, controlled, and correctly performed. Okay, so here you can see like this is the whole concept of QMS. Like it interconnects or streamlines all the uh, necessary steps and it coordinates the whole, um, the lab system. It makes it easy. It gives it a systematical feel. Like there is a step-by-step -step process. By ensuring all of these 12 points, there can be quality in the, lab and the lab system. So let's begin with organization. Okay, so organization is basically having a hierarchical chart showing how management, supervisory roles and authority flows. Uh, it's basically a chart that shows like, you know, how the management and all these roles that are discussed here, how they, you know, how they flow together. In addition, there are like documentations showing the functions and duties of every lab member. 
like there there is a documentation there is like a, a forum and it shows like uh, it shows the name of every lab member and what they do what their experience is what their competencies are what their training is what degree they, uh, do they have it's like stuff like this anyways the next step is personnel okay so uh personnel is basically um the staff members uh, anyways i'm not reading like whatever is written here sorry because i'm trying to explain it and make it short because like it's really boring to just read all of this so i'll just explain it to maybe you know uh, at least make it not boring okay so um where was i um okay in the yeah the personnel okay so as i was saying that um a personnel is basically the lab members okay so they should be like well competent well trained they should have the necessary degrees required for running the lab and uh, they should know how to run the test they should they should know how to calibrate the machines basic simple concepts the personnel should be well equipped okay the next step is and then uh, equipment okay so um equipment yeah you should have all the necessary equipments for example if you uh, I mean, just like, let's imagine like you're advertising that uh, you can do like your lab has sugar test and then um, a patient comes and he's like, can you do me a sugar test or whatever? And you do not have the necessary equipment for that. I mean, that's like false advertising and you just don't have the necessary equipment to carry out that test. So you should have all the necessary equipments. Uh, they should be like well calibrated. Uh, you sh uh, the 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 lab members should know how to troubleshoot them, and uh, the lab members should know how to use them in simple form. Uh, and basically, you should have uh, as much equipment as possible, um, because it just helps with a lot of the tests. Or you should have the necessary ones at least. Okay, so like uh, purchasing an inventory uh, inventory. So basically, this is, uh, I mean, uh, inventory is like a backup, you know, like you should have a backup in uh, where you you store all the reagents. Uh, I mean, like, if you have reagents and they're going to run out, you should have an inventory or a backup, which contains all the necessary reagents that can be replaced with the reagents that are going to run out. Or like, if you have faulty equipment, then change it with the inventory one, you should have you know, a backup and another, um, um, how do I say it? Like you should have another equipment in place of that. Basically inventory can be used as replacement. Yeah. Okay. So, and then th there is like process control. Okay. So what is process control? Process control is basically what I uh, discussed earlier, like the pre-analytical stage, analytical stage and post-analytical stages, like, uh, you know, controlling all these stages or keeping a check on these stages. This is basically process control. And this, uh, as discussed uh, before, uh, it deals with the handling of samples in all these three stages. This is process control ensuring that everything works together and in, uh, in a good way and then like documents and records documents and records uh, basically like uh, on the walls or i don't know in the necessary places you should have documentations and records that includes the sops and then like uh, good laboratory practices glps like how to you know uh, how to do good practices in labs equipment maintenance logs occurrence books stuff like that it should be there in documents and records assessment okay so what is assessment assessment is necessary i mean this is a like a high value step you could say so this is basically like investigation of the quality system of your of the quality system of your lab and it can be done internally and externally internally like it can be done uh, with the lab members you have you run a demo you run uh, you, you just, you know, uh, uh, keep a check. You just do a test that, okay, 
I should check out the the quality system of my lab. That is like internal assessing, assessment. And external is basically like there's an outside body that comes to your lab and they like uh, they check they check out your lab, they check out the equipments, they check out the tests, stuff like that. And uh, upon that, they give you remarks and uh, certificate, you could say too. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the next step is process improvement. Process improvement is basically, uh, um, let's say like you're in the lab and you realize that there are five errors or problems in your laboratory. And then you decide to fix all these five problems. So this is like process improvement. Like you're improving the errors. You're improving your lab. This is process improvement. Okay, what is customer support? Oh, sorry, customer service. Uh, customer service is basically like, you know, uh, giving a good service to the customer, supporting them, being good to them uh, in easy words, communicating with them uh, in different ways, like, you know, getting feedback from them uh, through interviews, questionnaires or meetings or just asking them, you know, questions like how was your experience? Uh, like, can anything be improved? Uh, also, like giving discounts to them, stuff like that. It comes in like customer service. Okay, so the last one is facilities and safety. Okay, so facility, uh, facilities and safety. I mean, yeah, this is also necessary. Like, what if there is like uh, some kind of emergency in your lab? Like, there should be proper equipment or emergency responses, or I don't know, uh, like your uh, lab members should be like well-trained to to at least know what to do in situations like these. Like maybe you should have fire extinguishers or like uh, fire alarms and uh, uh, yeah, uh, stuff like this, you know? How to like use the environment to the advantage in emergency situations. Emergency responses such as, yeah, showers, you know, fire blankets and extinguishers, first aid kits should be easily accessible within the lab and the members effectively trained on their used. Okay, so uh, that was uh, my presentation, the end of my presentation. So thank you um, for giving me this opportunity, I would say. And uh, yeah, thank you.